Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Juki DX2000 QVP. On this video, I'm going to explain the settings. Now there's a lot you can do to set your machine to make it efficient and fun to sew. So let's get into it. To start with, I'm going to get back out of this. Now this is what your machine's going to look like. Your, your screen is going to look like when it, you first turn it on. It wakes up to straight stitching. To get into settings, we press this button right here. Now anytime you see the circle with the line through it, that means for that particular selected stitch, it doesn't apply. But if we were going to do buttonholes, and I'll go back and I'll show you that. So let's say we did buttonholes here. Now we get into settings and notice, now we can adjust that buttonhole. So the way that you would adjust it, if we say okay, we have three options and I'll show you what they look like here. Okay, so center option is gonna look like this. There's just a kind of a small area here where you would cut your buttonhole. But let's say you used a very fine thread and fine fabric you might want to have that closer together in the center. It's still going to make the same length and the same density of stitches. It's just that width in between. And then over here on this side, we have a wider area right here. So you can adjust that, but the default is right there in the center. Okay, the next one is if you were going to do a zigzag. So I'm going to get out of that and I'm going to show you what that looks like. If you're going to do a zigzag and some of many of your decorative stitches this would also apply for, but we're going to do that for this for, for now. Now you see this here, what does that mean? Well that means that you can adjust the stitch so that's either in the center or off to the left or off to the right. It's that baseline of the stitch that you can adjust. So that's what that has to do with. Okay, let's go back. And then here, and you can always change where you are by using the arrows, okay? And you can always get out of settings by using the clear button. So this one here is for when your foot, when your uh, sewing rolls to a stop, we've got it set right now so that the needle will be down in the fabric. Now, if you push your cutter button, the needle will come up. Uh, but that's how that is set. Now, you may want to have the preference of setting it so that the needle will be in the up position when it rolls to a stop, and that's what you can do there. I'm gonna leave it in the down position, because that's my favorite one. Okay, and then we have twin needle sewing. Now, for twin needle sewing, if I pressed OK on that wood, one, here, here we have single needle for twin needle sewing. I could do this kind of sewing right here. Now in your accessories you have a twin needle and it will sew about this distance apart. When you set this, you need to, um, you need to make sure that you have the twin needle that comes with your accessories or one that's that far apart. There are wider ones. This machine, this setting is not calibrated for those wider ones that they're further apart. So make sure it's like a two millimeter from one needle to the next. I'm gonna go back into settings and I'm gonna turn that off back to single needle and push okay. Whenever you um, make a change in the settings, always push okay so that that will be into the machine. Okay, let's get back into settings again. And then we're gonna go here. Now this, this one here is a whole family of settings. What this can do, let's start from the beginning here. Okay, this means with your foot control, you have two options. Of course, this is your pedal to make it go, but you've also got here where you press with your heel and things can happen. In this case, if you choose this one, that means as long as you've got your heel down on this part of the foot control, it's gonna stitch in reverse. So instead of using your reverse button, you can actually use your heel to sew in reverse and do your reverse stitch. Same thing, over here, you can do a locking stitch by pushing on that part of the foot, uh, the foot control. This is where you can do needle up, needle down by pushing on this again with your heel. So it's a kind of a, a single half stitch. Over here is a full stitch, so you could do one stitch cycle. So like if you're stitching forward and you want to do just a single stitch and no further, just 
have that setting and then push on with your heel on the uh, foot control in the front of it. Next one, this is where pushing on this part, you can uh, raise and lower your presser foot. Now that's nice, except you really don't need that as long as you're using the knee lifter. When you're using a knee lifter, that, that's not that important, but some people don't like using the knee lifter and they really prefer this, that's great. This one is the one that I personally like. That means that you can cut your threads without looking away, without doing this or taking it out and cutting your threads. You can just simply push with your heel on this. Now some people don't like anything to happen when they're pushing on the back and so they'd want it on off. And that's okay, in fact, we'll just go ahead and set it that way. Okay, let's get back into settings. Go forward here. Okay, so this one is when you come to a stop and you have it set, and there is a setting for um, needle down and it's the pivot function. That means when it stops the needle down, your foot will lift up a little bit. So you can have that either on or off. If you have it on, but you have it set again so that the sewing rolls to a stop with the needle up, that will not function. You will still have the presser foot flat down against the fabric. But if you have it with needle down, then you can pivot. Nice thing about being able to pivot is you can stop, the presser foot lifts up a little bit, and you can look at your stitches without losing your place. And then you can go back to stitching again. So that's a, a nice feature to have. The next one here is how high that lifts. Now if you have something lofty, like you're sewing on uh, microfiber fleece, you may want to have that set a little higher so you can set it higher this way using the arrows. Okay, next one is the floating function. Now that can be used along with your free motion quilting, but it also can be used if you're sewing something thick like microfiber fiber fleece or velvet, something where you want to have a little bit of room between your feed dogs and your presser foot as you are sewing. Okay, the next one is after, with if you set this on or off, if it's on, that means after you've cut, your presser foot will lift up. If you have it on off, after you cut your threads with the thread cutter button, the presser foot will remain down. I like having it all in one step, so I like having that feature. So we can go back. Okay, this one has to do with the darning function. And this setting is really the only way to get into darning. So I'll show you what that looks like. This is where it sews back and forth, back and forth. And it makes it so that if you have a hole in your fabric, you can sew back and forth multiple times. That's like one complete stitch. Here's the start, here's the end right here. And you can fill in a hole in your fabric, it's good for towels or whatever, um, to, to stitch that. Now, if it turns out your stitch looks a little bit like this, you can adjust this using the arrows. And then you stitch it out again to um, make it so it's more even like this. Now on this two pieces of quilting cotton, it worked out just fine right there at zero. So I'm gonna just leave it at zero. There we go. Okay. Then, let's go to the next one with this one. This is your startup speed. So like if you push your go button, you don't have this uh, connected, or, and I think it also refers to your um, foot pedal. When it starts up, it starts up slow and gradually comes up to full speed. If you want it to go faster, you can change it to faster, or if you want it to just go really fast right from the start, you can do that. I kind of prefer, prefer to be a little bit more cautious on that, especially if I'm using my start-stop button. I like to, oh, maybe I don't want to have it go so fast and and start right up. Um, that's a good way to, to control that part. Then, with this one, this is the speed at which you're doing your automatic locking stitch. So you have this button right here where you can program in, you do a back stitch or a locking stitch, and it will, uh, with this setting, you can program in how fast that goes, which is a really nice feature. Um, 
There are some machines that don't have this setting and when it does the automatic locking stitch at the end, it's just kind of like I'm waiting for it to get done. But you can make it go faster with this setting, which is a, a nice feature. Okay, let's go on. Now this one here gives you some brief outlines on just kind of a reminder on how to do your bobbin winding, how to thread your machine. Uh, it's just a nice little reminder so you don't have to get out your book. You can say, oh, it's right there in the machine. It's really nice to have. And then touch screen um, sensitivity. So different people have kind of different magnetism in their hands uh, or whatever it is. So the screen will respond maybe differently for you than for somebody else. If you want to change that sensitivity, you can change it right here. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there at three, which is what it was. And C is like your back button, okay? And I've been using that a lot. Um, let's go forward here. This one is for your screen contrast. Now you can contrast it to be uh, darker, lighter, depending on what you want to do, again, with the arrows. Okay, and then this one is pretty simple. It's, you can turn off the beeper, have a little quieter, or have it the uh, regular volume. Now, let's go on here. This one here is, what language do you speak? Your preferred language, you've got various options here. I like English, that's my native language, so I'm gonna leave it on English. And then over here, you can reset everything to defaults. Now, if you accidentally push that button, don't worry, because it's on no already, but if you decide to reset everything to defaults, factory defaults, you just push that the arrow over to yes and go OK. And setting completed means it's all back to where it was at the factory. OK, so that's your settings menu. As you can see, there's quite a lot to it. I invite you to just try things out, the different settings, and see what it does. Um, whenever you do choose a stitch, make sure you use the recommended foot that's recommended for that stitch. You'll get the best results that way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it's been helpful, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos on this machine and on other machines on our YouTube channel here. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.